Okay, well thank you. Um, first off, before I start, um, crop insurance rules vary so much depending on what county you're in. So if you could just give me a quick raise your hand if you're from like Moody County in South Dakota North. Raise your hand. Okay, how about if you're from Minnesota? And is anybody West River, South Dakota? Okay, all right, so sounds good. Um, like Justin said, my name is Brian Frichty, and I have a well, crop insurance office just across the border by Verdi, um, so I'm 25 miles away from here. Um, my job today, as I view it, we're going to talk just a little bit about the rules of cover crops, of, of prevent plant and cover crops. I think a lot of you probably are aware of some of the basic rules, so we'll try to not spend a whole lot of time on that. And uh, and if you're interested at all in crop insurance, that means you have a crop insurance agent somewhere and they can also help you with the rules very specifically. So the second part about what I want to do here today is talk about the economics of these wet acres. Um, we're going to try to show you your options in numerical form and that's what that sheet in front of you is uh, that looks like this. And so we will get into that in a, in a little bit too and if you want to follow along and write in your own numbers there you can if you want to just take notes and write in those numbers when you get home that's fine as well but um, to get started here I am gonna I'm gonna work off the sheet that's in front of you that has just a lot of writing on it and we're not gonna just read through it um, but just as a very very basic broad overview um, we know that prevent plant has to be due to uh, insurable cause of loss that's general to the area, okay? So I think we're probably all going to fit that this year. <laughs> and uh, so we, we're, we're eligible from the start right there. Secondly, we gotta have this 2020 rule, okay? So we gotta have at least 20 acres or 20% of your unit as prevent plant in order to get paid at all, okay? So your unit, depending on if your optional units or enterprise units, if you're optional units, we're talking about section by section, and you're going to have to have 20 acres in this section to qualify, and you're going to have to have 20 acres in this section to qualify, and so on. If you're enterprise units, we can add those together to get to 20 acres. So you can have one here, and five here, and ten here, and put it all together to get to 20. And now you're qualified for a payment for crop insurance, okay? And as a quick sidebar on enterprise units, Remember that if you're on enterprise units, you're doing that for the discount. And in order to get your discount, you have to have at least 20 acres planted in at least two sections. Okay, so don't let that sneak up on you and be a big surprise when you get your crop insurance bill in the mail and you didn't get anything planted and now your premium is twice what you thought it was going to be. Okay, there is one caveat to that. You can also have 20 acres in one section and then you can aggregate sections. So if you have another, section two has 10 acres planted, section three has 10 acres planted, you can aggregate two sections or more to meet the other side of the 2020 rule. Does that make sense? Is that of each crop or? Of each crop and of each county, if that applies to you. So you can have like enterprise corn units, but you'll pay the, the soybean. I mean, like, if you don't get any corn planted, but you get soybean planted on two two sections, will they charge you two different premiums, or? Yeah, if you don't have any corn planted, you'll get optional unit corn premium. But if you do get your soybeans planted, you'll get your enterprise unit discount. Okay. okay. All right, so figuring our prevent plant payment <coughs> now that we're eligible. And, and I should even back up here. There is one more rule. Uh, it's called your maximum eligible acres. So they're going to look back at your last four years of cropping history and they're going to find, if we're talking about corn prevent plant, they're going to find the year that had the most corn planted for your whole operation. Okay, so let's say two years ago you planted 500 acres of corn and that was the most that you've planted in the last four years. So that number is called your maximum eligible acres. Then they're going to look at how many you've got planted this year. So let's say we planted 100 acres this year. You now have 400 acres left of eligibility. So you, you won't, if you don't have anything planted, you'd have 500 acres of eligibility. But if your whole operation's 1,000, you're not going to get to call everything PP corn. 
Okay. So that's that's an overarching rule. And then they're going to look at your rotational history too. So does that make sense? Okay. All right. So what are we going to get paid? Um, they're going to take your guarantee, which you probably remember in corn is your 10-year APH history multiplied by $4 for corn, that's the spring price, multiplied by your coverage level, that's your guarantee. Then we're going to take that times 55%, and that's your prevent plant payment for corn, 60% for beans. Okay. Um, as I'm kind of going down the page, the last thing here is final plant dates, right? You're probably all aware of this. If you're Moody County in North, the 25th, so I think that's Saturday, is the uh, final plant date for corn. You have to try to keep planting corn until that date, according to your crop insurance policy. Probably not a whole lot of extra corn that's going to get put in before then. At that point, you can say, I'm calling it prevent plant. Okay? You do not have to say that. You can continue to plant if you want. And if you do that, you lose 1% of your guarantee per day for the next 25 days. You can even continue to plant after that if you like. After those 25 days, your new guarantee is the same as what your prevent plant payment would have been. So you can plant really late if, if for some reason you want to plant that late. Okay, and that is about what I wanted to talk about for rules. If you have any questions about rules as we go through this economic side of it, uh, we can do that. So I sort of touched on this a little bit. Here's, here's your options. You got some wet ground. It's the 25th or the 31st if you're in Minnesota or southern South Dakota. Uh, what are we going to do? First off, I, I hope you know this number. You know, what's the estimate for profit of my corn crop or my cash crop? Maybe it's beans. Figure that number out and uh, talk to your seed guys or your um, agronomists and figure out what kind of potential do I really have. The guys that I was talking to a few days ago, they were talking, you know, if you're, if you're in a 200 bushel yield environment, you might be in 160 bushel yield environment right now. Did you agree with that, Ken? Or? Absolutely. Yeah. So your yield potential is not on a straight curve right now. It is going to drop off dramatically. Okay. Every, every day that goes by that that uh, that hurts, that negative effect of dates is going to get worse. Okay? So figure out and know what that number is. And, and I've got just an example here. So if we can get this 165 bushel corn crop planted, if we can get $4 cash corn, maybe we've got some grain bins, maybe the price is going to keep going up because nobody's planting corn. Um, you know, we might get to 660 bucks as a gross figure. And I was coming up with, um, my slide's a little bit off here, sorry, I was coming up with around $650 of cost. I was using 100 bucks for seed, 100 bucks for fertilizer. The big things that are going to change this for each of you are your land costs and your machinery costs. And so please do not forget that if you have any kind of machinery payments, those are going to keep coming and now they're going to be divided across a whole lot fewer acres than probably than what they're used to being divided across okay and there's a few other things too like labor if you're if you're hiring anybody to help you on your farm if you're paying farm insurance that's getting divided across fewer acres there's a lot of stuff that is normally built into this budget that has to has to get paid for <coughs> somehow okay so remember that and then the next part here if you can write in your own crop insurance guarantee on the sheet. Again, the formula is your APH times your coverage level times the spring price. And in this case, we're getting $555 of coverage. I've had a few people thinking about the idea of putting in corn, and if it doesn't turn out, well, I've still got $550 as a guarantee for my crop insurance, okay? That's an option. Second option here is to call prevent plant and leave it black. Okay, so we know what our prevent plant guarantee is. You can go field by field with your insurance agent. 
You know, if I leave this one blank, what's that one going to pay me? If I leave this one blank, what's this one going to pay me? And it's that way whether you have enterprise units or not. Um, so figure out what those numbers are. Maybe that helps you choose if the weather isn't just deciding for you <laughs> where you can plant and where you're not going to plant. We talked about the overhead cost thing. <coughs> And if our guarantee is 555, we're multiplying by 55%. We've got 305 bucks coming as a payment. So that's not terrible. I think that covers a lot of land costs. If you had some fall fertilizer down, that, that's not a good thing. And if you got some big machinery payments, that's not a good thing. We might have trouble making that cover. But again, this is such a different thing from operation to operation. So for some of you, that might be $305 might look like great, that's awesome. And for some of you, it might not. So know your numbers, okay? Please be writing this stuff down when you get home. Our next option, we can prevent plant, we can take our $305 that we had coming, and we can plant a conservation or cover crop, okay? I'm not gonna fill in these numbers for you, Justin will probably talk a little bit more and Cindy too with this last one on what these values are, what we think we can generate from a cover crop, whether we're grazing it, baling it, or just building some nutrients to set us up for next year. Okay. And I think that as you do these numbers and through Justin's talk, I think you're gonna find that this is a very good option and there is some value to be gained by working through this cover crop thing. Um, that's that. Your last option here is prevent plant corn, plant a second crop. It doesn't have to be a cover crop. You can plant beans, uh, you can plant sorghum, you can plant whatever you want. If you do that, our normal prevent plant guarantee was 305 bucks. You're going to multiply it by 35%. So now we got $100 coming. So that's kind of nice. You got 100 bucks coming and you can still plant a second crop. know what the value of that second crop is going to be. The worst part about this option is that it has this APH kit. So if we call it prevent plant corn, they're going to come in and uh, give you 60% of your county T yield for an APH plug that year. Okay, so you know in your APH database, you have 10 years that make up that history. One of those years, is going to carry this plugged 60% of county T yield, which in most cases, depending on your county, is probably somewhere between 90 and 97 is what that number comes to. So you're gonna have a yield of 90 to 97 on your database for the next 10 years. So that's one in 10. So it's gonna, and, and if, if you're in a normal 200 bushel yield environment, that's that's 100 bushels less than what it normally would be, and we're dividing by 10, so you can figure that's probably a 10, 10 bushel less is what you're giving yourself for a guarantee for the next 10 years. I think that's a bad situation. I, and I that's do, whether you go this or you prevent a plant, period. That's I mean. only if you go this route and plant a second crop, or you will get this if you plant a cover crop and you chop it, or if you plant a cover crop and hay or graze it before November 1. Otherwise it won't, then what, what do they put in there on the federal crop? If nothing. you just prevent a plant, then it's thrown out. Yeah, nothing at all. So it don't have any impact. Exactly, zero effect. If you follow the rules, if you wait till November 1st on the cover crop thing, okay? But, you know, there's certainly situations where this could be very attractive. If I was nearing the ending of nearing the end of my farming career, I might really think about this because who cares if it hurts my APH for the next 10 years? I'm going to be done in a couple years. You know, take your hundred bucks and plant what the crop you want to plant. What about if you don't take the prevent plant and just ensure the soybean? That's fine. You can do that. No effect. You don't get the APH reduced. Correct. Yep. Just changing what you're planting. But you can't plant those beans till after the late plant period. Correct. If you're not going to take prevent planting, you can plant beans whenever you want. If, you, if you're going to plant it as a second crop and try to get the PP payment, then you'd have to wait. 
So if you're just changing what crop you're going to plant, it does not affect prevent. You're not taking prevent plant. You're just planting something different. So in other words, on this here on the corn, you couldn't plant them soybeans till the 25th of June. Correct. Yep. Now, I've heard, I write for three different insurance companies, and they're differing in what they're saying about this late planting period. Okay? First one said, you can plant these cover crops after the final plant date. That's just fine. We're going to wait till after November 1st. No effect on your APH full payment. The next one said you got to wait till the end of the late planting period, which is the 25 days. So I went back and I looked yesterday at the RMA handbook and it says final plant date. Okay? That's what RMA says. Talk to your agent, make sure everybody's on the same page about when you're planting that. Makes a big difference. <laughs> Say that again, Brian. That was a late plant date or after the late plant period? RMA says after the final plant date, which is in two days if you're in South Dakota. You could start planting these cover crops or second crop if you're going to go that route. Okay, so it's not after the reduced? It would not reduce it. But on the flip side, if you're going to use it for feed, then you're going to have to, you're going to, have to plant it according to the November 1st harvest date. Um, right, you might, you might not want to plant it until yeah, July right. 1. Yeah, yeah, yeah right. 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 Yeah. You see how there's a lot of different scenarios that this can go, but the good news is there is a pathway through this thing, and you can you can definitely come up with a good plan. It's just going to take a little extra effort of figuring out what your your best numerical option is, figuring out if you need feed, all these things. There is some value to be gained by taking the prevent plant, planting the cover crop, there's some value here, okay? So those are your options. Here, here are just kind of some final thoughts as you think through um, all these different options. You know, which carries the most and the least risk? As this corn market goes up, maybe there's, maybe there's some uh, potential upside to trying to get those last few corn acres in. Maybe that's more risky too, you know? You don't want to be mudding corn in. I certainly don't think that I would be out mudding in corn this late, okay? And which carries the most and least economic activity? I put that in there because I don't think that people are really taking into account the trickle-down effect that this is going to have on ag businesses in your local communities. It's going to be a big deal, guys. And so um, not just seed companies and chemical companies, but all, all of your local businesses are going to feel this eventually. So um, maybe that's part of your decision, maybe not. But um, follow the rules, and there is a path to get there. So that basically sums up my presentation here today. Are there any questions about anything? Yeah. My insurance guy says you cannot shop whatsoever. You're not going to one. Yep. True? Yes. <coughs> You can if you want to get the uh, option four here. Oh, sorry. The reduced, this 35% thing, yeah, you could do it that way. If you don't want that, then don't chop it. You can wet bale it. Correct. What the hell is we want to chop? Harvesting is considered, uh, chopping is considered harvesting. The, rule har the word harvest is in the prevent plant manual. That's why it's that way. Kind of, that's kind of too bad. Yeah, yeah, it is kind of too bad because it, you know, to get get it to cure to bale in November is a challenge, you know. But if you could chop it, I mean, it would have some teeth. In it. You got a little more moisture to work with that way. How about flip it, turn it on, leave it away? So you just mow it down. If it looks like it's going to get too mature, can you flip it back and then <coughs> bale the regrow it down? Like I think you could. Yeah. Like yeah. You don't yeah. basically take it off. Yeah. Right. Yeah. 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 It would be yeah. the same as just working it on. Yeah. You can work it under anytime you want to. Do. Or spray it off. Yep. Just keep 
You mean the, between chopping and clipping, because everybody calls it chopping. Okay. But we're not in livestock country as much as you guys are out here, probably. Well, as long as you're now actually you're moving into the field, yeah. The whole reason behind all these rules about chopping or baling is that they don't want you to have two crops, two separate incomes off of this field. They want your prevent plant payment to be the thing. And the reason for that is because people used to say, I'm prevent planting corn. They get their full payment, then they go plant milo, which is what they wanted to plant anyway. And then they got their two crops in the year. And so all these rules that you see, they keep adding rules every year to prevent plant. They're all because people are finding a way through, you know. So, so that being said, Brian, whether it's a cover crop or a second crop, whether it's bale and grazed or harvested after November first, you can't sell it to a neighbor, can you? Right. Or let them just come in and harvest it in the dead of night. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Tell me, there's none of that going to go on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, especially with the hay shortages we have. Exactly. Yeah. Do you think it's a fluid situation? Some of these rules uh, will change as the year progresses. As an overarching rule, I say no because you are signing up for a crop insurance contract at the beginning of the year. Okay, and those they can't change those rules unless there's a federal uh, declaration, right? And, and the latest rumor that I've been hearing is this November 1 date maybe gets pushed earlier in the season, which would be a great thing, but... Especially up here. Especially up here, but but let's not count on that. <laughs> no. Yeah. How do they decide on suitable working field days? The date thing? No, the hours or days that you should be in the field. They're going to go general to the area. So yeah. if, you, if all your neighbors are planted around you and you've got high ground as well, and you're not planted, they might look at you crossways. Yeah. Hey Brian? Yeah. If your county's declared a disaster area, area, do they use the APH for that year for your crop insurance, or can you throw it out? You can throw it out, yep. And that's been around. There's yield exclusions, which is probably on your policy. It's a free option that gets put on. Would that count for the 35% like the No, too? it doesn't. Yeah, because that's not an actual yield. It's a plug yield. Yeah. Great thought. <laughs> There's a pretty good chance that a lot of these companies are going to get declared yeah. disasters. So. Yeah. And like I say, it's the government. They can do what they want, but for now, that's how it is. You see, they're too late. <clears throat> yeah. So yeah. on the cell, you know, after, after November 1, is, can you do an exchange thing and not take any money for it? You should not be talking about that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, just, I'm just curious, sir. Yeah. Is that you're selling or not? <laughs> Economic benefit. Okay. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I'll be around if you have any other questions. Thank you. Very good.